Hi and welcome to our uh, third in the series of uh, Bahrain VAT. Um, today we're actually going to be discussing about lessons learned uh, from both KSA and uh, UAE. Uh, the last blog we talked about um, you know, when to start and I think that's obviously very important but the biggest lesson is don't leave it. You, know, we, you should have already started. Um, if you haven't then definitely uh, start working now even before any final legislation is announced. So, <clears throat> two of the, uh, I think, the, the biggest areas of why a lot of projects failed uh, in, the, in the Middle East um, for both KSA and UAE. Um, one is a lot of the solutions were developed in-house. Now, again, I'm talking more from a sort of a larger multinational or you know, multi-industry companies where they have an ERP system such as SAP or Oracle, and therefore they have a bit more of a complex tax requirement. If you are uh, running a single entity, <clears throat> such as a restaurant, then your tax would be a lot easier um, because you know where you're located and what the tax should be. But <clears throat> when you've got a, a, a sort of a multi-industry, in particularly if you have things like uh, medical, construction, uh, anything to do with uh, rental of, uh, of property, because um, you know, the difference between residential, which is usually exempt, and commercial, which is usually taxable, will have an impact on your, on your recovery. So the first uh, problem really we found is, is a lot of companies chose to try and do the, the work in-house. Um, we, we call that have a go heroes, uh, where you know someone thinks they can set the tax up because they think it's just a 5% and a 0%. Uh, and as a result, they, they have a go, they set the tax up, but it's, it's nowhere near uh, um, compatible or, or, or compliant really. Um, so that's the first thing, it's, it's you know the in-house teams who think they know what they're doing and they don't. I think the second uh, biggest issue really is uh, where companies have gone to third party uh, integrators. Um, they've used companies that, again, don't know what they're doing. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a very unique skill set to be able to understand and set up uh, tax from, com from a compliance point of view. Uh, and, you know, as I always say, you know, it's one thing to be able to set up a tax rate and a tax rule, it's something completely different to set up a tax solution. And we've seen countless companies who are now coming to us who have had a go themselves at setting up the tax. They've, uh, the IT department have said to their management, yeah, we can do this, no problem. And then what's actually happened is they've realized that they've gone to a certain point, they can't really do it, or they've got, they've got something together, um, what we call sort of a level one, and they need to get to the level five, and they find it very difficult actually to now go sort of cap in hand to say, yeah, we, we, we're, we're not good enough to get this set up properly. So, you know, from embarrassment or anything else, they'll, they'll blindly go forward and, and put in a substandard system. So that's definitely something to, uh, to bear in mind. Um, the other big, big area is a lot of companies will have set their ERP or accounting systems up when there was no VAT. And what we, we describe this a little bit like the Wild West, you know, of, of uh, you know, tax. Every, anything sort of goes. Um, now you have VAT in place, you, you now have an obligation to be compliant. And to be compliant, you have to do things in certain ways. So where processes are in place, so for example, um, you know, advanced payments or asking a, a, a customer to pay you up front, there's now a VAT implication on that. So that changes your whole concept of your process of asking for money up front, because if you're asking for money up front, you have, as a company, you have to account for that VAT. Uh, usually within a certain time period, and then later on adjust your invoices um, when the, the final VATWAD invoice is actually submitted to that customer. You're also going to get your customer saying, well, hang on a minute, I know that you've gonna, you're going to have to pay VAT, so I actually want a VAT invoice because I want to be able to recover that VAT. So as a result, you've now got to make a decision in your system as, you know, where we're not before, it was nice and easy just to have something as a on-account cash, there was no accounting or revenue being taken place. So now having a requirement to actually create an invoice, a taxable invoice, where you now have to change your accounting and everything else, that becomes a problem. So we've seen a lot of uh, situations where companies have tried to make the VAT fit around their current process, when really you should be changing your current processes to fit around sort of standard VAT practice. And I think that's something that you really need to be looking at doing. So um, hopefully you'll join me on my next uh, blog posting. But uh, until then, goodbye.